we're going to take a quick look at the Fuji X100F, do a quick unboxing and first impressions. This camera has been very hard to get and it's extremely sought out for right now. The X100, the X100S, the T, and now the F is a very successful line for Fuji, but some are even calling this the Mini X-Pro2. So personally doing street photography and uh, just I just like having a portable camera, that's why I got my Ricoh GR2. I wonder how this will stack up against this. I will have a, a full review coming with this and a bunch of other gear in the next few weeks, so keep in touch for that. But let's just see what this is. I'm not even sure exactly which one was sent out. This was sent out by um, b &H Photo as a loaner. They did not pay me to do this or anything like that. So I'm able to fully test this out. I'm gonna have a good month with it and I'm gonna be able to share exactly how everything goes. So let's take a look what's in the box and just see uh, how everything is. And Fuji usually has a good uh, design. So there's the box right here. Now, Fuji made a couple quick updates to this camera uh, coming from the rest and mainly in regards to the sensor. There's that right there. They moved from a uh, 16 megapixel sensor to a 24. They kept the same lens, the 23 millimeter uh, F2 lens. So that's probably some of the biggest things. And as you always get, there is your, your paperwork. And then in the box, just kind of lift up. And that's what you're greeted with right here. Oh, I think they have the silver one. That's pretty cool. Um, some people like a darker one for uh, the street stuff because it's a little more discreet. So you get the battery charger, you get a Fuji um, neck strap, the NP126S uh, battery, you get the actual camera itself. Let's clear all that aside. There's the camera right here. Let's open that up. Uh, I haven't held one of these in so long. My last one I held was the uh, X100S, and I own, used to own the X100, and oh my gosh, here it is right here. The grip of this camera just feels outstanding. Let's take a look at this uh, lens right here. That looks the same old, good old usual. Nothing changed there, but the grip of this feels amazing. That is the EVF that once you put your eye up to it, that's the sensor. I'll put this back on here. You, you still control your aperture through the top, or you can control it right here. The one thing that they took from the, I think the X-Pro2 is the ISO dial, in which you lift this up a little bit, kind of like an old film camera, and you change the ISO that way. So that's ISO 500, 1000. Now, some people might have a problem with that, but I really like the way that is. You have your on and off switch. That's your shutter, which you can even still screw in a shutter uh, button. Uh, this is your exposure compensation, which is up to three, it looks like. Is that three? It looks to be three that you can get. And this is your shutter speed dial. But overall, you can map this a certain way. You can use this for shutter, aperture, shutter. And I know what a lot of people are doing, um, are using this front button for, and this can switch between your, um, your modes for your viewfinder, is that they are using this for like back button autofocusing. Because when you put your your finger on the lens right here, it kind of naturally falls in place and you can focus. I think they're actually doing it like this. You can focus and then hit the shutter all at the same time. Um, quick quick off the back, I mean, actually, I thought the grip was kind of cool. It's actually very slippery. It's not grasping very well. Like, I'm afraid I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna drop it, actually. Uh, they did improve the battery life on this as well. And it at the bottom, big compartment, it holds one SD card. But uh, first impressions is that it's, it looks great. It looks like it's a functioning camera. I'll have a full review on it soon. I do like the X-Pro2, especially with that ISO dial, but the ergonomics, I wish it was a little bit deeper and I wish the, the grip wasn't as slippery. But overall, um, we'll, we'll dive way more into this, but great lens, great, and I liked it before. I do wish they updated it a little bit and that's what a lot of people were hoping, but a lot of people are breaking the bank for $1,300 to grab one of these it comes in silver like this and in black, so you can go from there. And we'll do a full review. Let me know any questions or comments you have about this, and I'll do my best to answer those in the review. Thank you so much for watching. This is the first look, hands-on first impressions of the X100F.